So episode six of House of the Dragon has just wrapped and now we're getting a 10 year jump into the future. We're seeing a Princess Rhaenyra now played by Emma Darcy is pregnant. Olivia Cook will now be performing as Queen Elizabeth Hightower moving forward. I would very much pay attention to the kids both sides of the factions, the Greens and the Blacks. But there's been rumblings about how many more time jumps are going to be taking place. I think there's going to be one more time jump to towards the end of the season. Eventually at some point King Viserys is going to pass away and his passing will eventually lead to the big conflict between both factions. The Greens are obviously Queen House and Hightower, supported by House Hightower. She even found a new ally from House Strong, Larys Strong, in fact. He manipulates her by using her own emotions and concerns and intuition and turns it against her former friend of Rhaenyra. Hello there, Joel from Real Talk Movies here. I'd like for you to give this video a thumbs up and hit the like button if you can. Help me reach my sub goal by hitting that red subscribe button. Click that bell button to get notified every time I upload a video. Now let's get on to today's topic. But Rhaenyra has a point in being angry to quit Allison. In the very beginning of episode 6, right after delivering birth and holding her, her baby in her hands for the first time, she's forced to walk all the way to Queen Allison's chambers, carrying her child in a trail of blood. The big shift that we're seeing is Sir Kristen Cole. He was once a very close member and a close friend and lover, former lover of Princess Rhaenyra in previous episodes. He turns against her in this episode and going forward. He actually aligns himself with the Greens and is even guarding Queen Allison's door. But yes, King Viserys is still alive. Yes, he is still alive, hanging by a whim, looking over at his new grandchildren all playing. And it's, it's a very close knit family. There's quite a bit of tension still, even within the kids. You see a lot of, you know, bickering amongst both sides, you know, both of the kids from Rhaenyra's side and Allison's side. It was nice to see Princess Rhaenyra name her child after the former lover of Lanyar, Joffrey. While King Viserys watches over along with his hand of the king, Sir Harwin Strong is on the ground teaching the kids a little bit about fighting along Side Kristen Cole and Harwin Strong is nicknamed Breakbones. So you probably shouldn't mess with the guy, honestly. You know, he could probably break a couple of uh, bones in your own body, maybe a couple limbs here and there. So Harwin Strong did get a chance to meet his own kids. In fact, the kids that Rainier has had at this point have, I think, for the most part, been from Harwin Strong rather than Lanor. And you can see this reflected obviously with the kids' genetics. He gave Sir Kristen Cole plenty of his own rage and anger after he was pushing him towards admitting that those kids that he's training are in fact his own kids rather than Lanor Valerians. Aegon Targaryen is also found along with the other kids and takes the two of them down below towards the dragon pit. Aegon does not play any favorites because he even leads his other family members to pick on Aemon. He has yet to train a dragon for himself and they're playing up that fact. The dragon pit is super dark and it is terrifyingly exciting to see a dragon come back and breathe fire. Not the first time we'll see it in this episode. Daughter of Queen Allison and King Viserys, Helena Targaryen, is taking a liking towards bug collecting. She, she might be a little weird, she might be a little different, and you can even look at her mother looking towards her, giving her an off look. I think Allison is not very good at controlling her kids' impulses, much like Cersei Lannister. And in fact, it leads us right into, yes, it's back, that same window that King Tommen fell out of, I don't know if it's the same exact one, is where Aegon himself to reveal himself to the entire King's Landing. Queen Allison furiously brings him down and tries to beggar him to behave better and to behave stronger and to understand the significance of his power and of his name and of his role. Allison tells him that he is the King's firstborn son and will be the King one day despite even in fact King Viserys committing to Princess Rhaenyra being his heir. You can definitely get a sense of how much Queen Allison resents Princess Rhaenyra when she is plotting herself in a, a way out of Princess Rhaenyra being queen one day. Queen Allison then confronts her husband and tells him about the secrets of Princess Rhaenyra having multiple kids with Sir Harwin Strong. Viserys is completely out of the loop and brings up a story of his horses having different hair colors. I think he was trying to make an indication that it doesn't really matter if their hair color is a certain color, all that matters is that they're their child and you know, that's the parents, that's the, that are the parents of the kids. He's also losing more of his sanity, he's losing more of his mind, he's de his body's deteriorating day by day, month by month, each day he sits on the Iron Throne. Patty Constantine has been amazing this season. He's gonna be the Sean Bean of this season and you know, die at the end of the first season because you have to think the conflict between both factions has to start whenever he dies. And I'm counting, I'm praying that he holds it in and I'm praying that he hangs in there, but I don't think uh, King Viserys got very much fight left in him. Unfortunately, Sir Harwin did get into it with Sir Kristen Cole and later on receives a punishment. 
he is forced to be sent back to Heron Hall, the place his house is occupying currently. His father, Lionel, believes that he will be safer at Heron Hall, away from Princess Rhaenyra, away from the politics, away from the jab of knives that is happening. Unfortunately, that doesn't go right. Lainor Valerian gets cold feet and ultimately wants to leave. He's honestly been very emotionally disconnected ever since losing his lover Joffrey in the last episode, but Rhaenyra tells him that he will not abandon his family. Even though that he says that he's played his part, Rhaenyra understands the significance of having House Valerian tied and married towards her because, of course, House Valerian owns the most ships in the entire Westeros, so it's important to have that kind of ally on her side. Rhaenyra, however, wants to prevent a war from happening at all, so she seeks to find some peace by offering a marriage between her son, Jacaris, and Queen Allison's daughter, Helena. House Targaryen marries within itself, just as it's done in the books. King Viserys actually really liked the idea of marrying these two Targaryens and joining the houses because you know that King Viserys ultimately wants to seek peace and sanity and harmony in his kingdom and between both of his sides of his family. The queen is not really happy and takes this issue out and storms away. Queen Allison is confronted by, by Larys Strong in her chambers. There she tells him that his father should resign as Hannah the King because he can no longer give an unbiased counsel. And Larys decides to take matters into his own hands and decides to take care of his family his own way. As a way of torturing criminals in dungeons, Larys cuts off their tongues so that they can't repeat what he says, what he tells them. He gives them a mercy rule and lets them leave prison if they do one horrible de deed for him. And the deed that he offers these set of prisoners is to go north to Harrenhal and burn down the castle where his brother and father are found. The fire rages on. We see Harwin and Lionel Strong being burned into their own castle. I think that the crumbling alliance from Rhaenyra's side is going to crumble even further. And I think Allison will try to put her father back in as Hannah the King. The politicking of the show is just getting more personal and more personal. And this is going to lead us to an eventual conflict between both sides which have dragons. Speaking of dragons, we go to Pentos to check on Prince Damon, who is flying around the city along with his red dragon, Caraxes. He is joined by Lena Valerion on the back of Vagar. Vagar is an even bigger dragon and was one of the first dragons to arrive to Westeros. Damon has taken Lena as his wife now and they have two daughters. Daughters are named Bela and Reyna. Lena is pregnant with her third child. She's about to give birth very soon, but unfortunately she is having difficulties in her childbirth, much like Ama Aaron had in episode one. She decides instead of dying in childbirth like Ama, she crawls away and finds Vagar and asks her to burn her alive. And Daemon finds her as she's being burnt. At the very end of the episode, Rhaenyra takes her entire family to the castle at Dragonstone. In an effort to avoid a lot of the politics and avoid a lot of the drama, I thought that this episode delivered so much on the intensity, on the performances. Olivia Cook did an incredible job as Alison Hightower. Emma Darcy did a great job as Princess Rhaenyra. We're gonna see so much more of her this season. And I like how this show is just kind of diving the conflict that existed between both Alison and Rhaenyra down towards the kids. I think that's going to be an important thing to watch moving forward. I'm gonna be on the lookout to see what kind of time jumps they do as well. You know, they're gonna bring in different actors for a lot of these kids, you know, once they age up and time jump again. Long live King the series. So comment below and let me know what you guys think of this episode. I found it very enjoyable. So if you guys did or didn't, let me know in the comments below. Leave this video a like and subscribe for more videos. Check out some of my other videos or the playlist on your screen right now. This has been Joel from Real Talk Movies. See you soon.